now I've got uh, links to rebuild because that was waiting for um, an MTA. So these are basically, if you remember, these are the first two of the three, first three packages, or two of the first three packages we built um, when we set out to build Beyond Linux from scratch. So I'm going to search for links. And load that back up. And we've got the new TLS. Oh, it's experimental, so it doesn't matter. We've got zip unzip. So now we've got an MTA. So that's what we're building this for. So let's tidy up wget. Oh, but I should have ticked that off. I'll check that it's ticked off. It's been ticked off, that does. Okay. So let's extract links. Let's just check the options. So we want SSL. This one goes to enable local child set. So we'll add enable NLS. Um, and I'm not going to do it with GNU TLS because it says it's experimental. So what I'll do is just copy this and add in the enable NLS to print translated messages. And let's build it. Install it. That's done. And let's just check these config files here. So I'm going to view these. Um, etc links. In case it's overwritten the config file. So the first one's about the locale. Yeah, it looks like it's overwritten. Oh no, it hasn't. It's yeah. These are the three changes that these three sets have done. So the first one is oh, it says here the following lines are saved in your previous configuration. So it's actually pulled them out, teased them out of um, the config file that. Uh, we had before, sorry, I'm doing the wrong buttons here. Uh, let's go to the top and search for it again. So it's pulled, for example, this bit out, or rather this bit, and um, it's actually added them into the bottom. So what I could do is rerun the scripts, there wouldn't be any harm in this. And you, you'll see the changes that happen in that config file. And then we can delete the bits at the bottom because um, it's actually quite handy to have them here with the description. So if I go back to the top again and do another search, you can see that's what it's done there. It's added that line in there. And if I look for editor... And again, you can see it's added the default editor there. So it's better to have it here with the comment so it makes more sense. And do it again with the cookies. The persistent cookies. Okay. Oh, 
was looking for hash persist. Yeah, there it is there. So again, the that that setting. So we can delete these ones now, and it would be as if we'd never rerun it. So that's that. So let's just run links again. Make sure it works. Yeah, it's found its home, own home page. Um, let's go to. Linux from scratch to make sure that's still working. Yep, that's fine. So it's good. So that's that one complete. I'm going to mark that off. It's done. Then I've got sudo, which also needed an MTA, as well as um, open LDAP. So let's find that one. There it is. Yep, so open LDAP and MTA are the two extra ones. We've got the Kerberos as well, actually, now. Not sure if that was important. Um, in actual fact, we've got to yeah we've got to build Kerberos again, and that's one with the optional packages. I wonder if it's worth installing that now. So we've got Deja new GNU uh, GNU PG key utils we haven't got. We've got Open LDAP RPCC bind we haven't got. So let's just take a look at these two. We've got libtirpc. And that needs lib um, Kerberos as well. Um, let's just check what this installs. libtirpc. So, yeah, that is installed. So let's do RPC bind. Utils as well, we're at it. You can see Key Utils needs Kerberos as well, so it's another circular dependency. But Kerberos only needs Key Utils as an option, so that's why we've been allowed to build Kerberos, um, which prevents us from building Key Utils, which is I'm sure why I've got this as a rebuild. Um, and then we can go back and rebuild Kerberos after we've been installed. So let's get this patch. And let's start building RPC bind. So let's have a look at this. Right, so it looks like we just build this as the instructions tell us to. There's no test suite, so just do sudo e make install. And that's done. And now we can install key utils. Um, oh, I better mark that one off actually. Uh, RPC bind. I imagine that's in the networking part. Yes, it is. RPC bind. So let's do key utils. So just run make for this one and then as the root user we run these commands to test it ctl 
Okay, let's run etc source etc profile and then let's rerun that uh, make a test, we don't rerun the said oh, that is interesting oh it needs to have it installed, that's what it is so again it's a bit strange that um, we're telling, we've been told to run tests but it obviously needs to be installed first so let's install it and then run the tests um, we can just do a make minus k test because we've done the said that's better It says some may fail if certain uncommon options are not built into the kernel, so there's a chance we may see that. The remember the kernel was built from a default build. As the kernel developers see a default build to be, so they may well be included. <coughs> Okay, well that does seem to have passed okay, so that's good. Um, so let's tidy that up. And let's check what this is, general utilities. Key details. Um, okay, we're now in a position to rebuild MIT Kerberos. What's this one called? KRB. So let's do this first bit and then we can double check the configure command. So lock state the uh, system ET system SS. System Verto. LDAP, so we've got LDAP, so we can add the LDAP module in. Where's the LDAP? Right, so let's run make. A 
Okay, now it says the test may pick up a former version of the uh, MIT Kerberos installed. So we have already got it installed, although it's not a former version, but it said it may pick up the installed versions of the libraries rather than newly built ones. So it recommends installing first. So we'll do that. And then it's more of a guarantee that we're testing the right thing. And we've got to run make check as a user, make minus k check. So I'll do that now. Okay, it looks like we had um, an error. Um, let's see what it says about errors. So there would be any expected errors. Um, this one here somewhere failure k in it for code one oh well guessing the initial credentials so maybe it's maybe our configuration because I didn't put a proper um, domain in so it could be what it is Maybe picking up the config file we've already got. In fact, we need to check that next anyway. So let's just check this uh, configuration file hasn't been overwritten. And yeah, it looks the same as before. So that's good. Um, one thing to just check is that we've got a dictionary file at that location that's mentioned in the tip. 
So it's user share dict words. Yeah, we have, so that's good. That points to crack clip words. Yeah, we think we can look at these. Yeah, it's just a list of Valid words, I think it is. It shouldn't be used for passwords. So that's that installed. Let's try doing this create database thing because I seem to remember it didn't work exactly very well. Um, now we've got a full set of uh, dependencies installed. Right, so I'm going to remove that. And start again. So it's all oh, right. Okay. Oh, now it could be that Kerberos is running. Stop. Let's make sure it's stopped. Now I'll remove that file again and try and recreate it. No, it's still. Right, could be these other files here, so I'm going to remove all of them. Let's try once more to recreate this. Right, that's better. So that's recreated the database. Now you should populate the database with principles. For now, just use your regular login name or root. So I'll use my regular name. So I've just got to change this to kernel text PC. That's been created. Seems to have worked. <coughs> this should have created a file in ETC named KRB five key tab. So let's have a look at that. Um all oh right, we need to quit this bit. Where's my sales track key tab? So it's set to 600 and 
and it's definitely created that. So it's just to test it using this command to turn it on and then K in it. Cannot contact. Okay, I wonder if because example.org is not a real domain um, and that's why it's failing. No, it's not working there. Till, let's try the other one. Oh, this this is working a bit better than it was before. I seem to remember. This this was the host principle, along with encryption methods used to access the principle. Okay. So assume that's worked. Okay. So let's um, start that off again. As it's part of directory. Well, at least it's not coming up with an error when it starts. That's the main thing. Let's restart it. Make sure it shuts down and starts up properly. Yeah, it does. So there's a shame about this message, but. Um, I haven't got a domain that I can use properly, unfortunately. So that is Kerberos reinstalled. Let's tidy up. Okay, I'll be five. Okay, and I'm going to mark that off my rebuild list and go back and install sudo. But first, because of these changes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a reboot, I think is probably the best thing to do just to make sure that the system is still stable. So I'm going to do Control Q on that. that download Manager still there. Let's terminate these two and quit that. And reboot. Start with sudo then. Let me just check to what directories I've left here. There's quite a few. Like maybe just two, yeah, just two. So it's not too bad. So this is rebuilding sudo for 
um, open LDAP and MTI. And we've just built Kerberos as well. We've rebuilt it rather. So let's start by putting this set command, command in for a fix. And let's examine these options here. Secure path. So we don't want without PAM because we've got PAM, so we just take the default settings. And we can test the package with this command here, rather these commands. And check the results with this command. So we've got no failed tests there whatsoever, so that's good. So let's install it and I'm just going to load the config cache again just uh, for sanity's sake um, this should be the same but it's worth checking Yep, that's the same. And we'd better check this. This shouldn't have changed at all, but let's just check it anyway. Yep, that looks fine. So that's sudo rebuilt. Take that one off and up here as well in security, just check it's done there. Yep, it is. And I'll tidy up. Okay, so next I've got um Right, um, well, what I can do is the same back end only after GIMP, so we've done GIMP, um, so let's do that one. I've got several dotted around, so this one's the most recent one. You might be wondering why I'm doing this one when um, I've been going the, down the list, my list of rebuilds, it's just because it's on its own. The remainder seem to be either quite a lot of work or there's several dependencies. So I'm just going to get the easy ones out of the way first of all. So it's just the back end it says here because it requires GIMP, uh, their optional front end. Um, so it's obviously to build an extra library maybe so that GIMP's got facility to scan from within the package itself. So let's extract the back end. And we don't need to add the scanner group, which should already exist. So we'll add this enable the USB as we did before.
just check for any other options which are going to be here. There's nothing there. Take it these are to do with. I know it's to do with this glue scanner. There's no others. So let's run that command in. This is anything to do with GIMP at all. So it's recognized options with Doctor. That's interesting. Let's do configure help. Let's check for GIMP first of all. Uh, it's interesting, it's popped up a window. Oh, I should have done grep, that's why it's piped the output to GIMP. <laughs> uh, I keep forgetting to put grep in. So there's no switches for that. Let's grep for dock. So doctor is the correct switch with so it's minus minus with minus doctor. Ah, oh, right, so it's not. That's interesting. There shouldn't be any doc hyphen der. I don't know where that's come from because it's not in the configure command. So maybe it's an internal script that's done that. But I can't see anything to do with GIMP there. Um, whether there is. Here we can have a quick scan through. The headers. Well, it could be that by default it builds something for GIMP anyway, and GIMP will find it. So we'll build it anyway, just to make sure it's complete. We can run make check. That's all complete. So let's reinstall. And that's the back end done, so we don't need to do anything else with the front end. So that's complete. I'll just check that I've marked it off on my list. 47. Yep. And I'll mark it off on the rebuild list. Okay, the next one I can do is the add way to icon theme because that says to rebuild it after Inkscape. So let's find that one next. So Git, we've got GTK 2 and 3, we've got Libris, yep, and that one. So let's expand this. So straightforward configure. In fact, I'm going to just configure it to see if uh, anything does come up about. No, it doesn't. Nothing about Inkscape at all. Not to worry. Let's build it. And so do what is it like install?
that's done. Make install. Yeah, that's complete then. And I'll mark that one off as complete as well. So the next one I'm going to do is um, Right, there's a chain of them here. There's ALSA plugins which needs rebuilding for the optional packages. Then ALSA tools because we've now got GTK plus two, plus three, and FLTK installed. And then ALSA firmware because that relied on ALSA tools which we obviously didn't build, which is why we need to build it. So the first one is ALSA plugins. So this will complete the ALSA suite that we didn't complete. So yeah, we've got FFmpeg, lib sample rate, pulse audio, and speaks, and obviously ALSA lib we've already installed. So this is a straightforward configure and make. And install. So it's done. So I'll mark that off as complete. Now we've got to do ALSA tools. So I presume we need to download this. We wouldn't have built this because, um, well, certainly FLTK didn't exist, and probably not the other two, GTK and GTK, GTK2 and GTK3. Oh, it does, okay. So we need to recreate this bash function and start a bash shell that lets it on an error and remove a couple of files for QT2 and 3, adapt some of the files and then we build each one using this script. I seem to remember we did start run this in case it did build without the um, I think GTK plus two and three um, and it failed halfway through so that's probably why we've got the source package downloaded And that's just about it. We'll exit that bash shell we created and that's all done. So I'll mark that off. Our sub plugins tools I've got to do. Our sub tools 42. And now we'll do ALSA firmware, so let's mark the tools off. So 
So I don't know if it says it says firm of certain cards. Now I know my sound's already working because it's the, the firmware is actually in the kernel, so technically I wouldn't need this, but um, um I'll install it for complete this and your your sound card you may well need it, I don't know, but it's a straightforward package as you can see to build. And uh, make install. That's it. So that was Alpha firmware. And mark that off the list. So, um, the next one I'm going to take a look at is to build cron because I've got four packages that um, have shown that uh, there are cron scripts which can be added to have certain events happen on a regular basis. So I look for cron and it's fcron that the BLFS team chosen there's several different versions of cron so we've got all the um, options here so let's save this link so as the root user, we need to uh, ensure that um, all the messages from cron can be logged. And we need to reload the log daemon and create a separate cron group and user. So now we can come back to the user and configure the package. So let's have a look. Okay, so we can leave out this without send mail because it's got an MTA installed. Let's put this one over. Okay, so they're probably going to install their own boot script, aren't they? Yes, they are. So that's why they've got the boot installed. No, don't need system D units because we're not using system D. We can set the text editor, and so we can add these two. So let's start off by copying this bit. Ignore the without send mail. We need these two bits. Then we'll add. Let's leave it out there in case it finds it. And let's add this DSSSL with the path they've got here. So that should resolve to a path if we tab it. Yeah, it does. So let's run that in. So it cannot find path to send mail. So let's try typing in where is send mail. Oops. Okay, so like it says, we need to add with send mail to use the MTA and add in the path that we've just found, which is that one there. That's the binary. 
So let's rerun the config. So let's just see what it's found. It's found Pam read line. Didn't say anything about Vim at all. For that matter, didn't say anything about send mail either. So what I'm going to do is I will rerun that with the with editor, and this should resolve to user yeah, user bin and something like v or vi or vim. Let's set it to vi or vim actually because that's the actual binary. And that doesn't look any different. So because of the changes I've made on the config, I'm just going to play it safe again. Remove the F cron. Expand it again. And rerun that last config command. And then I can build it. So now I can build. Okay. And let's install. That's installed. If you'd like to see what this is about, uh, so there's some PAM files installed. It says to modify and require. To suit your needs. If you'd like to set up periodic hierarchy for the root user, first issue of following commands. Okay, so it looks like it. Yeah, we do need this because I think I've l remember seeing at least one of the packages we're going to revisit to create the cron scripts uses um, like weekly or daily. So this will be a good thing to add in. Create a directory and then add them to the cron tab. So, what it's doing is it's adding that's hourly, that's daily, weekly, and monthly. So, we want to install the boot script to make sure it's running every time we boot the machine. And as it's got there, start it and generate the fcron syscall file. So that's the fcron package installed and running as well now. So let's tick that off as complete uh, fcron. And the next thing I want to do is, is to go through the my rebuild list to find the packages that have got cron scripts that we can add. So the first one I've got is make CA and this will be to update the certificates I imagine. So we're not installing the package, all we're doing is creating the script to reinstall or update the certificates so we're already root all we need to do is just copy that in so that should run weekly now you can see it's gone into the cron weekly directory so that's the make ca1 next one i've got is pci utils so this will be to get the latest hardware updates
So although that's not in the correct color as if we had installed it, we should have. Yeah, we have got it installed. So again, you can see here it's to um, quite a quite weekly again weekly to update the PCI IDs. So just copy and paste that in, and that's done. PCI Utils. The next one we've got is the same thing for USB Utils. There's that one there. And again, another weekly update. So if we look at this directory, there's the four periods if you like and we're looking at the weekly one is where they've been installed in these um, shell files and if we look at the current one for example update USB uh, USB that's right update see that's all it is in, in there is a header the shebang header saying it's a bash file and the actual command to fetch the IDs so I mean, in theory we could run this now to prove that that command worked but there's no point, it looks, it looks okay. Um, we can just wait for that to run whenever the weekly time is which will be uh, is it F cron tab is it? Yep. Okay it's in a it was in a boot script I seem to remember. So that's that one. Let's mark that off. Should actually be checking to see if these are actually knocked off on my list. They should be. PCI utils I haven't marked off. But USB utils is. Um and the last one I've got is Sysstat. Let's take a look at that one. And here it is. Oh, they've only given an example this time. Use Manasseh when they say two for. So, what we can do is we can um, put this in the root one. The other one looks like it's gone into like a boot. Cron tab. I'm not, not aware of how to edit that or change that, but we can put this in the root one here. Um, and that's probably because these are different periods. So I'll just paste that in. And that should be it. You'll notice that these got ampersands on the right, so it means that they'll run in the background until they complete. So by saving this, it should say, yeah, modifications are taken into account right now. And there wasn't a FCRON tab before, so it's using an empty one. But if we edit it now, um, not only has the colouring come on for the comments, if we save it now, oh, it's actually identified that it's there's no changes. But this time it didn't come up saying it's an empty CRON tab file. So that should be it for the crons. They should run as and when needed. So let's mark the last one off on my list. And mark off this stat. Make sure it's marked off here. Yeah, it is. So let me go back to my list and see what else there is to be done. Right, I've got a couple that rely on Cairo, and Cairo relies on some optional packages and QT. And I've got QT to reinstall before KDE. And QT Web, Web Engine after QT. So there's a few dependencies there. Um,
got Mesa to be reinstalled after Plasma, so that won't be done until KDE is done. Uh, we're going to look at curl, that just says after optional packages, so let's see what optional packages there are. Right, it looks like we've got all of these now. Um, I think we did these too. Broccoli. Uh, let's tidy up here. Yeah, I've got that one. And... Yeah, we've got that one. So I think curl can be reinstalled. It's probably for things like the Kerberos, LDAP and Sambra, I imagine. Oh, S tunnel. Let's see that one. Right, let's get that one. I know we haven't done that one. So there's no options within the BLFS book, so I'll just save this. And extract it. This time I'm doing be running a troop jail by Alan Privilege user, so I've got to create some what well, a group and a user for S tunnel. Signed probably in this one. There's a man's choice of jail. Okay, so I haven't got any keys, but if you have your own, then it tells you there what to do with them. With some, for some systems with bin utils prior to two point two five configure may fail, so we haven't got. I don't think we've got two point two. No, we've got two point three four. So we should be okay to. Yep, just configure and make. Um, why have I done this as the root? Let's start again. Oh, was it because I was doing... Oh yes, group pad and group, sorry, right. So I need to go back, extract S tunnel again. And just rerun this. And run make check. Right, ncat and nc not found in path. Alright, that's required to test, so we can't really test this then. Not to worry, let's install the package. If you do not already have a signed SSL certificate and private key, create the S create the S tunnel pen file in the etc tunnel directory using the command below. You'll be prompted to enter necessary information. Ensure you reply the prompt is the name or IP address that you'll be using to access the services. Okay. The name or IP address you'll be using to access the services. So I'm not really sure what that would be. is to um, well okay what I'll do is I'll put in what's it say here
So I imagine the country name is going to be GB. State or province of England. Locality. Um, let's put London. Organisation name, Kerno Tex. Um, I'm not sure what that is, so I'll just put a full stop. FQD and if your server, just use localhost. Okay, so that's done. As a root user, create the directory use for the PID file. Okay, so sudo minus e. Let's do SEO. And create a basic configuration file. Finally, add the services you wish to encrypt to the configuration file. The format is as follows. Okay, well, I haven't got any others, so I won't do that. Um, we haven't used Zine at D, so I just need to install the boot script and start it off. Okay, I net D mode must define one endpoint. Is there any changes I need to make here? No. Maybe I need to add in a service. That could be the problem. So etc this tunnel conf Oh, there's one here actually for HTTPS. that as well. So let's try. Yeah, it's working now. So it obviously needs at least one service to configure. So it should mean that I can connect to, in theory, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, I'm going to try this. Connect to localhost, because I've got an Apache server running. Using, no, it's not working. Maybe there's more configuration needed for Apache. Yeah, the like the unencrypted one is working. It could even be that the browser what doesn't recognise the certificate. Possibly, I'm not really sure how these things work. But anyway, that's S tunnel installed, so let's tick that off. And we can now do curl. So let's copy this. So we'll add GSS API. Um, I'll leave the OpenSSL as the um, 
SSL option. So we don't need that one. Add list live SSH2 in. We've got Harris. That looks like that's the end of that configuration. That's good. Let's have a quick nosy through the summary. Uh, looks like lots of things are enabled. A few things that aren't. Got LDAP, PSLs there, HTTP2 is. Okay, looks pretty good. So let's just build this. and run the tests.
Okay, so that has finished testing. Um, two test cases have failed. Um, and neither of them are the ones that are reported to fail, although down here it does say that. Um, where was it? Oh, it does say a few other tests may randomly fail. So for none known reason, so I think considering we've only got two when there are at least five apparently known to fail, that's a pretty good result. So let's now install the package. Reinstall it rather. And let's curl rebuilt. So I'll mark that one off on my list, on my rebuild list. And I'll just check it's marked off on my main list of completed packages 17. So that's that one, let's tidy up. And let's see what other ones have got. So I really need to maybe look at the ones, the packages that have got optional packages to rebuild. Um, I think I might look at Emacs next because then I can get rid of that. It needs to be built after optional, optional packages and then pin entry needs to be rebuilt after Emacs. So let's look at Emacs. Oops. One window. So as you can see, a lot of this we've already installed now through other dependencies. Um, Gconf looks like we haven't done. We've done that one. I think we've done that one. Turbo. I think, I think we've done that one there. Yeah, so just need to check these ones then. CJPEG is there, so we've done that one. G settings. Slash user. Include. G settings. Desktop schemes. Yep. So it looks like just gconf we need to do, and we've got all the dependencies for that. So let's download it. So, um, Orbit 2 is a deprecated package, so we just need to copy this as it is. And install it. And that's done. So this is in the GNOME libraries, gconf. Clear that one down and we should be okay to rebuild Emacs now. So, like I 
just take the It looks like we need to specify this bit here, so let's copy that and add in that bit. GIF no, that we have installed GIF there, we've got TIFF and we've got GNU TLS, so that should be our config command. See what come up here in the summary. So it hasn't got Cairo for some reason, even though we've got that installed. Or L, I presume that's GConf, even though I've just installed that, so that's a bit strange. Um, Let's do a help grep gconf. So maybe I need to add in that command as well. G settings desktop schemas. G settings replaces this. Let's try with gconf. See what happens. So GCOMP has been activated now. G settings is still activated as well. Um, so the only one I need to look at is Cairo. So I need to add, oh, it's experimental, right? Okay, I'm not going to enable that then. So again, to be double sure, I'm going to remove the directory, re extract it. Configure command, which is that one. And now I'm going to build it. There's no um, test, but it says you can test it by running this command here. So let's try that. And yeah, that's pulled up a window. And there it is. So that looks pretty good. Today's date showing that we built it today, so that looks okay. Let's quit and now let's install it. And we'll update the icon cache for GTK. That 
that's that one reinstalled. So I mark that off my rebuild list as done. And I'll just check it's been marked off my list that I'm working through. 660 max that hasn't been marked off. So let's mark that off. And I'll close that one down and tidy up here. Okay, so now I need to do pin entry because that relied on Emacs. So we've obviously got all the other tools there, so let's extract pin entry. Do the standard configure. And we can add some options here. Want to enable Emacs? Yes. I'll put this in like I did before, even though the default is yes. And we can enable GTK2 and GTK3 as well. Even though the default is yes. And enable pin entry, default is maybe, so I guess that decides itself. So it hasn't found the Emacs pin entry again, funnily enough, even though I just installed it. Let's do uh, the config and most something we haven't done for a little while is cleared up the LA file, so I'm going to do that now. Let's just rerun no, still not having it let's do a help grip emacs if there's any other options all oh, right okay we need to enable pin entry emacs so let's add that Okay, that's set it to yes. Default pin entry. Okay, so that's all done. Let's build it. No test suite, so make install. That's pin entry done. So save that and tidy up. And I can take it off my list, chapter eleven. clear down this tab. So what thing I might start looking at now is the other packages that have got other packages as the dependency to see what they look like. I think we should have got a lot of them installed with any luck. And then I'm going to concentrate back on the QT1 and Cairo ones. Um, it's a little bit more complicated the looks of it. So let's look for pole kit as my next one. Just double check that. Yeah, pole kit. I've got eight here that have got to be rebuilt with optional packages. Then after that, I've got about half a dozen left. 
So that's pretty good that we're actually clearing up this big list. So Polk it, that's QT. Polk it nine, Polk it. So this was for, well, it just says all the dependencies. So now we've got all of these. Optional runtime. All oh, right, this needs plasma. Polk it known for XFCE. Right, so I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to add a little note oops, to my list to mention plasma and XFCE because there I'll see some big ones I'll be coming along to do. At a later point. And XFCE. Okay, so the next one I'll look at is Color D. So let's search for that. So this D last Chile, but it seems pocket skew right. On desktop, looks like we've got that one. Color DGTK and bash completion. Right, bash completion we didn't do that, is on my list. Let's have a quick look at that. Oh, that's an extra package, so I won't be doing that then. I thought it was a wiki page actually. So we've got SANE and XSLT, yep. So let's just check this known desktop. I think we've got this one. Right, we haven't. Okay. Have we got dependencies? I think we've got that one. Oh, yes, we just checked this one, didn't we? Yes, I think we've got that. We haven't got that one. Double check that one. Got the others. So ITS tool. Yeah, we've got that one. Libsec comp. Don't think we've got this one. SCMP. No. X keyboard config. Oh, this is part of the X window system, so we have got this. But we can double check it. Yep. So we've just got to install these ones. Let's see if we've got this. No. Right, okay. So let's do this one first. Let's just take these. We've got Vala, we've got GTK. We'll change that to true. And we'll change the men to true as well. So let's build the build directory. Run meson. Docs equals true. And equals true, and that should finish the configure. Can I build man package at dot book XSL NS. So is that one that's not in the web pages? 
in the book, maybe. Uh, Oh, I see. You'll need a namespace version of the doc book. So I can't think. Let's look for doc book in the contents. Doc book NS. No, it didn't look like we've got that. So that's probably why that's failing. So we can't do the man pages and probably not the docs either so maybe why they're set to false so let's take that off and rerun the configure oh it still says man pages even though we've put docs true oh do we have to put false is that why it is True, D man is false. Well, that seems to be alright for the docs, even though it says we need the namespace version of doc books XSL like it does for the man. So this may fail. Let's try it. No, it seemed to run. Ninja test. Right, that may be that fail because I took too long to click it, so I'll click it really quick. No, it's still failing. It may require a color profile for your primary display. So that could be why it's failing. Okay, so it's pretty pointless and I haven't got a color profile, so I'll just install this. Fine. So that's color GT, uh, color D, no color GTK installed, isn't it? So I need to take that off at twenty-five. Color D GTK. Get rid of that one. That up so now we'll get sec comp and this is straightforward configure make make check and install
Okay, so that test has passed. Um, complete, complete pass. So we can install it. And that's libsec comp done. So that's in general libraries now. that tab and tidy up. Okay, so no desktop. Here. Okay, so let's create the build directory. Looks like we're going to use all the options here. Distributor. Well, it's not going to get distributed, but I could put something in like kernel text here as well if I wanted to, I guess. And um, I'm going to enable the documentation. And we want the test as well. Oh, okay. Let's put a space in there. So let's run Ninja to build this. That's successful Ninja test to run the tests. And two tests, they all pass. So sudo minus e. Ninja install and that's that package done. So while it's installed and oh, it's just finished, I'm just going to look for this package in section 33. GNOME desktop. So tidy up. And I can now do color D again. So I've added the group news already. Let's do this to clean up about 100 warnings. Make a build directory. Let's take a look at these. So we need that one. VAPI is true. System be false. Cut the decompact true. Okay. Our glass sensor, we haven't got that installed, so we'll leave that. Bash completion, we haven't got docs we can add in. Oh, looks like it's similar to before. We can't do the man because we haven't got the namespace version of this style sheet, so we'll just add in the man equals false, and that's our configure. And let's run Ninja. So next we have to install the package. And we have Dbus running so we can run the tests. So it says, yeah, color self test daemon has failed. Or color D test daemon, rather. So that's okay. So that's that complete. So 
So let's check that off, pop this off, chapter 12. Color date. And I'll mark my rebuild list as complete. And shut this down. Download it, uh, close that, not that. So, next one I want to do is cups. So, I can do two less color to your device. Paper. I think that was installed. Let's check this. Comp. Yep. And that should obviously be set to A4 already, or whatever's appropriate for you. Yep. So the paper's done. Kerber save JDK. So I guess it's re to reinstall for maybe at least PHP and Kerberos. Um, I've actually got to reinstall PHP. So I might do that now. Actually, let's do that. Have a look. That needs a patchy, so I need to reinstall a patchy. API util. I've got that to reinstall as well. APR um, think I did my IDB let's check these two got open no dev and postgre grisk album doing them so let's just check this uh, let's just try my SQL yep that's definitely there APR, APR, yep, that's definitely there. APR util, right, so I'm going to reinstall this one. Because we've got all the dependencies now. Uh, oh, let me just check this one here. Chapter 11, yeah, we've got that one installed, or at least I've ticked it off, so I trust myself there. So let's extract this, and GDP Immigrants User, it's Crypto, right, so we can have that Barclay DB plugin. Have that switch, and we've got LDAP as well, so let's put that in. Build it and we can run test, make a test. Oops, I've actually got right. I might need to do the um, LD conf so config. So, Let's rerun that test. Yeah, it's better now. It's working. So test DBM is known to fail and it has just failed, so that's okay. As long as no more, that'll be good.
and that's that single failure so I can install this now and that's that done Oops. so check that's ticked off chapter 9 APR util Mark it off my re rebuild list. And I can go on to Apache 2. Just double check these. See if we've got lower. Yep. Oh, yes, there's two versions as well as I remember. GHTP. I think I've got that one. can do Apache. So we added the user in the group, don't need to do that. Let's extract the file. So let's do the patch and the set first. can look at the <coughs> config command Looks like the default configure is sufficient. Uh, just one thing I want to check actually is the um, LDAP support, that's it, I'm not sure. Let's put in enable LDAP. Let's be sure it's using that. There's too much here really to look through to check it. Uh, no, I saw it then. So I'll assume it is going to be using it. So I'll just run make now. It's done, so I'm going to install it now. Oops. These commands. And what I'm going to do is to reload the Demon. Okay, and I'm just going to check that the server is still working now. So I just type up for host, that should be enough. Yep, it's still working. That's good. So that's Apache done. Let me tick that one off. Chapter 20. Oh, that's all we've done. Okay. So I'll mark off my rebuild list, Apache is done and tidy up so 
Now I'll go on to HT, uh, sorry, P, PHP. So tidy HTML5 we haven't got. Libio DBC. Did that one. I think that is everything we can do. So just a couple of dependencies to add in. So let's do this one first. Download this one as well while I'm at it. Waiting for the other one. It's taking its time. Okay, here it comes. Must have woken it up. Right, so libio dbc So let's just check the options here again. Looks like we don't need to modify anything. Okay, and let's install package, and that's complete. So back to general libraries, and that's libio dbc. So now let's tidy up. Um, uh, we downloaded this one, haven't we? So let's extract it. Release. Okay, there's no extra options there. So we can just copy and paste the commands. Install the package. So that's general utilities. Tidy HTML five. And now we can rebuild PHP. So yes, this seems we I forgot about this a lot of options here, so let's just copy them all in. Um I'm gonna press enter and stop this straight away just to get the whole command back. Uh, let's take a look at these. So let's go to the top. Oh FPM I can see there. That pair. config file path that's there it's said lib bz2 enable calendar enable dba shared There it is. Enable FTP. 
Let's get text and then we'll MV string. Right, um, it does say about this libxml. You need to add disable libxml to configure. But it's already in there. No, it isn't. I thought I saw it. I thought I saw that. Where's Apex S2? Right. Instead of proof. Okay, so I won't put that one in. I should close my SQLI support. So let's add that one in. Location MySQL Unix socket pointer. So we'll probably need to put that in as well then, in that case. PDM MySQL support. Let's add that in. We've got MySQL loaded, and lastly, we've got the tidy library just installed. So let's see if that lot configures. Okay, so we can't do the socket. Oh, I see. It's because I haven't put a space in. So I just need to copy back what I've deleted there. MySQL D. MySQL SOC. Okay, so it looks like that's conf finished configuring, so let's build it. Okay, so now let's run make test, time this.
Okay, so that's finished. Um, looks like there was some files. It does say several will fail, so I don't want to send this. Um, so a quick look back to see how many there were. Looks like just the one failed, so that's not bad. And one warning. So I'm going to install this now. Install it. Okay, now it says the default config files for this fast CGI process manager are only installed if they do not exist on the system. And if it's the first installation, they should be renamed. So we're not going to do that. Let's build the documentation again. And the documentation is many HTML files, bundle pair is not installed because of a bug, but we can fetch it in case it's not there, that's done, so that's PHP installed, um, configuring Let's have a look at the, oh, what's this here? Solution prefix. So I'll just press enter to continue. Uh, well, funny enough, I want to look at that anyway. Okay, so let's now look at the etc php.ne. And there's something about the includes by the looks of it. Yeah, it looks like it's modifying that line. So it looks like this config's been overwritten. So let's let's just look at the bottom of that file. So pairs added that that command we just wrote uh, ran. Let's run this. So that's not added anything there. Let's go to the top. Look for include path. Yeah, it has modified this. So it looks like we do need to add in these other. All right, we need to check the httpd comp file now. Let's look for proxy module. And FCGI module. So it looks like it's removing the hash. Yeah, they're commented out. So this uncomments them. So it looks like that doesn't need to be changed. You wouldn't expect it really, I suppose. Well, unless HTTPD had overwritten it, but obviously it hasn't. And we've got to check this proxy pass match. So let's look for that. 
Okay, so that's been added as well. Uh, oh, let's do that search again. Yeah, that's the bottom of the file, so that's what that does there. Directory index directive. Directory index directive. index.php so I imagine we can copy this index.php I don't remember doing this last time because I didn't understand what it meant but seeing looking through these config files it makes a bit more sense Lastly, adding a line to the setup to set up the PHP extension to show how the PHP source may be desirable. Add type. So let's look for add to type. Oop, we're in the right window. At least I don't worry about the MIME configuration. Okay, so it looks like here we can add this bit in. So that should be it. Let's shut down the PHP server. Um, actually, let's do this in the right order. We can list what's in that directory um, oops. so it's to httpd Oh, I know what I want to do is shut down. I'll see. Dot D. And, well, for example, shut down will be zero, I think, isn't it? So looking at these, we can see that HTTPD gets shut down before PHP looks at it. I think that's the right way of reading this. So that means I can shut down HTTPD first. Then I'll do PHP. And then start them up in the reverse order. looks okay. So I'm going to try the local host again. Looks okay. Um, what I could do to test this PHP thing, I don't know if it will work actually, might do. Go into the, oh, what was it, SLV? www. So that index.html is the file you can see on the browser at the moment. If I edit that, you can see the HTML that's in there. If I create a directory called, and let's become the Apache user. Oh, is that not allowed? Okay, not to worry. If I create a directory called Q, actually, let's go to Q and create a file called um, 
index.php now I don't know any PHP so I'm not going to put anything in this apart from maybe hello uh, Apache recursively. All right, okay, looks like I can't even create this for some reason. Read, write. Oh, it's only the owner. my SLI. Oh, I see. No, that's right. I did less my SLQ. Yeah, that's right. So it means if I put a Q in here now, yeah, it, that bit about making the index PHP serve up a web page, if you put in a directory, that has worked. So it's recognised that rather than um, showing the um, actual file listing. And I can prove that if I go into the Q directory again. And so make a file, I'll just touch a file, no one, let's create one called index.test, um, for example. And put in goodbye, for example, on that one. And um, change back and change the ownerships again. So now, if I put in or remove rmq the index.php, now if I refresh this page, it should so yeah, it's not found anything. I thought it might come up with a directory listing, maybe that's been disabled. So we've still got that one. If I put in a queue, it's obviously been set to look for an index.html or an index.php. And I assume that's why it's coming up with that, that message there. And if I remove the queue directory and do a refresh, you can see it's not found because it doesn't exist. And if I remove that, we can go back to the root again. So that looks like that's all working very well. So that's PHP done. Uh, let's see where that's in, uh, listed in 13 programming. PHP. Oh, right, I've already got that ticked off. And I'll mark it off my rebuild list. It's done. Close that down and tidy up now. And now I can do cups. So I need cups filters here. Post installed. So that does that mean it's a runtime requirement? I wonder. Let's get these both up. 